I do see a lot of stuff on social media that people are kind of obsessed with like counting the grams of protein. And so, you know, like how I, you know, I eat 60 grams of protein. I need 20 grams in, in breakfast. I, um, need a lot of protein. And they're also saying a gram of protein per kilogram body weight is popular. So can you tell us a little bit about why people are so obsessed with protein and if we should be as well? Let's start it out by saying one thing that people have to leave this conversation with, and that is as you increase more animal protein in the diet, and most of this concern with protein has to do with modulating animal protein. And the point is, is that we have more than 20 studies that are long-term, large-scale studies that all corroborate each other, that as you tweak animal protein up, you get um, shorter lifespans and increased risk of both cancer death and cardiovascular death, all cause mortality. That animal protein is the element that perhaps most correlates with shorter lifespan. So first of all, we should be watching protein and the main watch should be to not to consume too much or not to consume any if, if possible. That's for the longest lifespan for people who get the protein from plants, not from animal products. Now, once you agree that the evidence is overwhelmingly corroborative and undeniable that more animal protein leads to shorter lifespan, then the question is, how do you get enough eating plants, right? So then, so then the question is, yes, plant protein is, doesn't have the dangers that animal protein does. Matter of fact, these same studies show that more plant protein led to longer lifespan. So now the question is, is what are foods are the best sources of plant protein and how do we get enough protein from plants? I hope that should be the smart question because people on carnivore and keto diets eating animal products are now demonstrated in long-term studies to be shortening their lifespans and causing long-term negative outcomes, which we've talked about a million times. And the question is, does a plant-based diet give you enough protein? And the answer is yes, it gives you about a gram of protein per kilogram body weight. That's true. Authorities recommend usually 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram body weight, 0.8, but it's a little less than one gram. But as we get older and our ability to buy it, to break down protein and digest protein goes down, then we go to usually a gram per kilogram body weight as we get older, over the age of 80. So yes, we were getting about 35 to 40 grams of protein per thousand calories. And a nutritarian diet focuses on those things people do wrong where they extract the protein from their diet. And the main thing people do wrong by taking the protein out of their diet that they need is by putting oil on their food. Because we're saying that nuts and seeds is the source of, is a better fat source that goes into your bloodstream slowly without a caloric rush that doesn't trigger the brain to eat more food. And it's not as fattening. But nuts and seeds are a mixture of fat and protein. But you took the oil from the walnut or the oil from the flax seed or the oil from the hemp seed or the oil from the, you would get just the fat without the protein. So if we took it, so the average American is consuming 500 calories from oil a day, that's 500 fat calories with no protein. If we took those same 500 calories from nuts and seeds in place, or from beans or from anything in place of the oil, we would have just consumed 15 grams of protein with that amount of calories. We're not going to get our 30 to 40 grams of protein per thousand calories anymore because I put oil on my food and my calories are coming from oil or from sugar. So we're talking here about five types of plant foods, fruits vegetables, beans, nuts and seeds, and intact whole grains, not white flour, which loses protein, or sugar, which loses protein, but actually the whole grain that is intact has protein. But in any case, the highest protein plant foods are green vegetables, beans, including all types of beans, but including soybeans, and nuts and seeds. So we're telling people, yes, eat some beans every day. Yes, eat some soybeans. Eat, yes, eat some green, veg eat green vegetables. Yes, eat hemp seeds, eat chicks. Eat sesame seeds, eat these high protein foods. So a nutritarian diet that we're recommending people eat is relatively high protein in, among plant-based diets. It gives people like 16 to 18% protein. It's pretty high in protein. Where they've analyzed other plant-based diets that give people like 10, 9 to 8 to 12% protein because they're not eating their beans and their nuts and things like that. So yeah, and the reason, I think the reason why these studies show more protein, more plant protein leads for longer life is because the foods that are highest in plant protein Beans, nuts, and seeds, and green vegetables are also the foods that contain the most anti-cancer phytochemicals and longevity protectors. So we're eating foods that are high in protein that contain longevity protectors. You know, we can look at, let's look at the soybean for a minute because tryptophan is converted into chironine, chironine that makes, promotes cancer and cancer replication, cell replication, invasiveness of cancer. It makes cancer cells spread. And the tryptophan and the methionine in animal products push the cancer spread. But soybeans contain tryptophan, but because they are low in methionine and also because they have the factors 
that block the, the flavonoids, that block the conversion of tryptophan into tyrannine, then they don't have the same effects on, on helping, and they, and they block estrogen receptors, so they don't have the same effects to promote cancer as the animal proteins do. So there's still different biological effects between high animal protein and high plant proteins that have different effects of promoting aging and growth and cancer. That's why we'd rather people, if they want more protein, have some hemp seeds, some soybeans, some black kidney beans, some could have broccoli and have you know hemp seeds and Mediterranean pine nuts, but don't do the animal products to get more protein. So the answer is yes, I watch protein. We watch not getting too much and we get our protein from plants. And then we have, that's the formula for a longer lifespan. When you say not getting too much, I know a lot, a lot of people on the internet want to be big, really, really, really strong. And so what would you say to them for those people that say, I gain so much more muscle, I feel more energetic. I feel like there are vegan people, like a vegan portion that kind of moved over to low carb, high, high protein. And what's the danger in that? Right, exactly. Because let's look at this for a minute, because all these athletes who have improved their careers and extended their performance life. We're talking about Novik Djokovic, one of the best tennis players that ever lived, who wasn't that great when he was 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, when he switched over to a nutritarian diet, then he got much better stamina and performance. So in the third set, instead of being the top 10 in the world, now he's in the top two or three in the world or the top one in the world, because now he's got that stamina to have the breathing, the focus, the concentration when you're tired into the events. And aging slower so they can still stay competing. Now he's competing, he's like 38 years old, still competing. We're talking about Tom Brady and Venus Williams who got her health back through eating this way. And we're talking about people who are basketball players, tennis players, world-class skiers and quarterbacks, but not linebackers. Because eating this diet, Tom Brady is not gonna get huge on this diet. He'll prolong his career, he'll still fit, he'll still he'll be concentrating. And me being 71 years old, I could do like 70 push-ups, let's say, right? But I can bench press maybe, I weigh 145 pounds. I used to maybe be able to bench press 160 pounds. Now I could bench press like 140 pounds. I could, just, I could bench press my body without hurting myself, of course. Now, I worked out with weights and was, a, was an athlete most of my life. And I still didn't top out more than like 152, 153 pounds. My strength is limited from my diet because my diet was mostly was plant foods that limited my how big I could get. I'm going to be the best skater. The, I'm going to jump high. I'm going to run fast. I'm going to be a great runner. Eric Schlappi, a world-class um, professional skier in four Olympic games. That means 16 years, he was at the top of his game in the United States ski team as, as downhill skiing. You know what I mean? Because he stayed, he carried his blender, he ate his greens, he had a healthy diet. But he's not going to be a linebacker on a football team. I'm not going to be a power lifter. My strength and my size is limited by my diet because I'm not overdoing animal protein, which acts like a growth promoter, which pushing up like steroids because IGF-1 and growth hormones are like growth promoters that can promote excessive growth. So yes, we can be the best athletes in sports that don't require excessive growth. But the minute you're a power lifter or a bodybuilder or a linebacker on a football team who needs to get over 200 pounds to get be effective at your sport or 250 pounds you're going to have a hard time doing that on a plant-based diet unless you use protein supplements like isolated soy protein you're better off with animal products if you want to get unnaturally large so they're right they can get a little larger and a little stronger and a little bigger you know i'm strong for my body weight i can do my 10 pull-ups you know what i mean i'm strong for my size but I'm not going to, you saw me in the gym the other day doing crunches when I pulled my legs up over my head, right? From hang, from a hang. Um, I'm strong for my size, but I could get bigger and stronger if I ate animal products, but that would shorten my lifespan. So getting unnaturally large from animal products is going to shorten a person's lifespan. And if people want to do that, live a shorter life and get cancer and get unnaturally large, I guess they would could choose that, you know? But so in any case, the linebackers on football teams, the NOSH study showed that linebackers on football teams who ate the diet to get extra big for their sport had the shortest lifespan of any occupation in North America. Did you guys hear that? That these people that we now know that the shortest lifespans and the same thing these other studies show that people on the keto diets have the most early life deaths because they're eating more animal protein. So even if you could get a little bigger and stronger by eating more animal protein, it's not worth shortening your lifespan over it. In my opinion, some people may feel they want that. They want to do that. And that's some um, their, their choice. I have nothing against people who want to shorten their lifespan and get a little bigger, you know, get excessively large. Kyrie Irving and... You know, we're talking here about all these um, top basketball players 
that uh, um, are doing things to prevent aging and have it long and enhance their career. And they're not worried about getting excessively large. We can get big and strong enough eating plant, uh, eating a plant-based diet. 